Hey guys, so I'm working with these beautiful flowers today. Um, the colours of them are so vibrant, so I've chosen some Distress Oxide and Distress Ink to work with. Um, so the first one I'm going to use is the Picked Raspberry in the Distress Oxide. Um, and I'm going to use the packaging technique today. So all I'm doing is, got a piece of acetate that I've cut off from some um, book that I had. Um, and I'm spritzing a little bit of water on it just to make it a little bit more runny so that it can smudge on the page. And at the moment I'm just going to pick up one of my water brushes to blend in the um, ink to the water. Um, as you can see here, it makes it, I don't want it really runny that it drops on the page, which I made a mistake later on when you'll see when I did that. Um, but it actually worked out in my favour so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but now we're just going to lightly, and I mean lightly, touch the paper with the acetate. And I'm just rolling it. And I can see where all the ink's building up in the big splotches. So in a minute I'm going to whack my acetate over those splotches. The reason I love the acetate and the packaging technique is because it gives you such interesting detail. Like all around the edge, you can see all the tiny little splatters of ink, um, and they're just perfect for this type of layout. Um, so I just use a little bit of kitchen roll um, and wipe away any excess that I have. And in a minute, I'm going to get the roll of um, kitchen roll, and I'll explain in a minute why. But I'm just letting some of those um, paint where the paint's gathered a little bit, where the ink's gathered a little bit. I'm just smudging them in a little bit so that they don't look so bold. So I, over on the left hand side, I've got three big splotches and they need to be watered down and moved around a bit. So I'm just using my watercolor brush. And you can pick these up on Amazon. They're very cheap. I, got, I think I got a set of three. So I'll link them down below. So now that I've cleaned off my brush, I'm going to bring in the carved pumpkin. And I just put it a little bit on the acetate again. And I realised I need to quickly dry the ink on the page. So I'm rolling the roll of kitchen roll how many times can you say roll in one sentence over the um pickled raspberry and i'm now spritzing a little bit of water on the carved pumpkin and i'm just going i'm just rolling it and this is where i make the mistake because it drips but you just go over it like it didn't it honestly didn't even affect the page um and i'm just tapping and I'm, i only want this color to i don't want it to be too much because it's very subtle on the flowers as well. So I don't want it to be the full color on this page, but I really want it to stand out. So I'm going on a lot of the white areas and the white space. Um, and again, just wiping it off. So I'm trying to when I was doing that, I was trying to manoeuvre some of the um, big bits of ink that were on the page um, that were mixed with water, um, but instead it wasn't really moving. So I used my kitchen roll and I just dabbed it off a little bit. Um, and now I've got my Distress Spray. Um, and instead of spraying it, I'm just literally going to tap it on. Um, and it gives such a an awesome effect I absolutely love splats um, with ink on a page it just it looks it, I don't know it gives it another bit of texture and you see another dimension on the page and it, it just really helps and it just really works um, so now I'm going to do exactly the same technique again with the kitchen roll and it picks it picks up some of the ink but it also dries it as well, which is really helpful. So 
So I'm looking through my box of photos and I found this photo. Um, it's really interesting because they're actually two boys. They're called Charlie and Oscar. Um, and I absolutely love this photo. Um, it was in my old bedroom as a child growing up and I just, I absolutely adored these pretty cats. They honestly, they were so lovely and I, c I can't describe to you how much enjoyment and happiness I got from just looking at this photo and I can't believe I haven't scrapped it before um but it's just it was just so nice such a lovely picture again as I said um so I'm just at the moment trying to find a backing for it um I tried the white and I tried the black and it just it, there was something missing against the background and I think I needed it needed some dimension so I've gone off to the side and I'm just going to trim that down and put a backing on it. So I found a piece of craft foam in my drawer um, and I'm just going to put a bit of tape on the craft foam and then put a bit of tape on the photo and stick them together. So that's got a piece of craft foam behind it and it is backed with white cardstock. Um, and I think bringing the white out from the background and putting it behind the photo, but also giving dimension so there's a gap between, it really helps lift this photo from the background. Um, and I'm just trying to figure out the placement. I rolled the paper because it had a bump in it where the ink had sat. So if you just roll the paper out, it gets the bump out. Um, and I'm now going to figure out the placement of the flowers that I want to use. Um, and I start with placing them like on the corners um, and I, I, I love to layer so I, as you can see I, I'll be trying to layer all these flowers and manoeuvring them around the photo for a little while. never go wrong with flowers on a layout you, you really can't as long as as long as you just have fun with it um, and just try but all I can do is say to you is just try if it even if it doesn't look right at first just keep going and you know you never know like you just you just never know how something's gonna turn out until you give it a try usually when I know the design and where things are going to go that's when I start gluing um, and I knew that I really liked as I said I really liked the flowers on the left hand side so it's at this point that I just thought I'm just going to start gluing and see where I go um, and I do end up using all of the flowers that I've cut out which is normally very rare I normally have quite a lot left over um, but I'm just using that left hand side as my clear palette and my clear way of structure um, and I'll just go from there really and just see how it goes. <laughs> That's normally how things like this start. Um, as I, I just the colours pop and I like the green, the greens and the blues from the leaves. They just get, they're such a contrast 
to um, to the rest of the paper. And it's at this point I also realised that if you look on the picture, the left hand side of the photograph is my wall that I that I um, I used a, this beautiful wallpaper in my bedroom, and it was absolutely stunning. And it um it was like a jungle wall. It's the only way I could describe it. it had parrots on it. And these beautiful coloured leaves, same as the leaves in the photo in in the flowers. And I think that's what attracted me to using the left hand side with these flowers, because I think it really brought that wall out of the photograph and onto the layout. And it really makes you then look across the photo. Um, and the little pretty cat on the left is Charlie, and the one in front is Oscar. Um, and they were completely identical. Um, and the only way you could tell them apart was Oscar had this beautiful white ring on the end of his tail. And he was the fluffiest. He was the fluffiest pretty cat. Um, and I, everyone just loved to stroke him. He was absolutely gorgeous. Um, and as I said, I'm just sticking, layering. Um, and I, I think I get left with two flowers um, before I realised the route that I was going to take. And those two flowers finished this layout off remarkably it was just perfect absolutely perfect um and it was i i loved the texture and i show you in a minute um the layers and how that i how i've worked the layers onto the page um so i put put different when i say layers I stick maybe a flower over a flower, but I use another platform to stick it over. So sometimes I use foam or sometimes I use the photograph like I'm doing here. Um, and I just give my my layout that much more texture so that you can, it's more flattering to the eye. So I've decided to um, die cut some leaves um, and I thought an, an extra little pop of colour would be um, a silver and I absolutely love sil silver mirrored cardstock so I took some of these um, die cut leaves and I'm just sliding them sporadically throughout underneath these flowers um, and I do it all the way up and down um, that line of flowers.
So as you can see, the title of this page is Pretty in Pink. And for the word pink, I wanted to use these beautiful foam thickers. But underneath has pink and on top has this metallic silver. However, I didn't have an N. So as you can see, I've taken an M and I've cut one of the half off. And I'm going to use an I and cut um, it diagonally at the bottom so that I can... Um, get an N. And that's my finished layout.